we rightly admire uh, doctors and rescue workers, and we think that it would be amazing uh, to be able to save someone's life uh, and to be able to give someone that type of gift. It's something that, that I feel quite deeply about, and I'm sure many of you do. Uh, I looked into this, and I've looked into it in quite a lot of detail. I'll show you some of this. Uh, and I found that actually uh, I too can save someone's life, and so can all of you. Uh, and in fact, uh, even without changing the career that you do, uh, doing whatever it is that you're passionate about, uh, you can, on the side, uh, save someone's life. Uh, in fact, if you make this a significant part of your life uh, while taking up whatever career you want, uh, you could literally save hundreds of people's lives. And I want to tell you about that and that choice that you have to do that uh, today. So I'm a philosopher at Oxford University, and I study ethics. Uh, and I study ethics because I really care about the suffering in the world uh, and also the opportunities. I really want to help people to be able to flourish. And so I want to find out more about how we can do that and what we should be doing. Uh, so when I uh, look at this, uh, I looked uh, deeply into uh, to the different ways I could help, and I found that I'd be able to earn, uh, during my life, uh, about $2.5 million uh, as an academic. Uh, I encourage all of you to, uh, to do that, to actually add it all up over your life. And you'll see that it's quite a lot of money. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I've got a middle class career, uh, but it's not extravagant by any means. Uh, but it still comes to quite a lot. And when you see that, you realize that it's worth putting quite a bit of time in order to work out uh, what you can do with it and how you can, uh, can help people. Uh, so I thought about this, and I thought about what uh, uh, I could do with it. I realized that I only needed uh, a small fraction of that money, if I was really being honest with myself. Uh, so I thought about this a lot as a grad student, and I realized I would, uh, if I kept up that kind of grad student type lifestyle, uh, I would uh, only need about a third of this money. And I would be able to donate more than a million dollars over my life uh, to wherever it is that, that I wanted to. Uh, so I then wanted to work out uh, what it is uh, that a million dollars could do. Uh, now, it turns out uh, that uh, it really matters where you give it. Um, this is not just a simple thing uh, as to uh, what it can do. Uh, it depends incredibly greatly, and we're going to see that in, in some detail. Uh, so in the case of uh, developed countries, uh, many of our best opportunities we already take up because we have enough money to do so. Uh, whereas in developing countries, there are many really great opportunities still there. So it often turns out that we can get uh, much better value for our donations if we give them to uh, poorer countries. Uh, so as an example, uh, if you look at blindness uh, in the UK or the US, uh, the, what happens is that one big opportunity that's still available is to donate money in order to provide guide dogs uh, to people who need them. Uh, that costs about $40,000 uh, per guide dog to train it and its user. Uh, and that's one opportunity there in, in a rich country. Uh, in poorer countries, though, uh, there are many cases uh, where we could completely cure blindness. For example, blindness caused by trachoma could be cured for only about $20 all up. Uh, so for the price of giving one person a guide dog in rich countries, uh, we could actually completely cure about 2,000 people in poorer countries, uh, which is a really tremendous difference. So uh, I want to ask you know, this wider question then. How can we compare charities? How can we know where we could do the most good? Now, one thing that you might be thinking uh, is about uh, the overhead ratio, uh, and this is something that one hears about quite a bit. Uh, however, I think that we shouldn't focus on it. Instead, we should focus on impact. So the overhead ratio is the percentage of a charity's uh, uh, money that they spend on administration and overheads. Uh, and that is a, um, uh, is amount, say, like 20%. Uh, it turns out, though, that it only varies by a relatively small amount, at most about a factor of two between different charities, whereas their impact can vary by a factor of 100 or more. Uh, so it turns out that we shouldn't be focusing on that. Also, many of the overheads are actually really important things that these charities could be doing. And uh, they tried then to not do those important things in order to please their donors uh, if they focus on the overheads. So it's a bad thing to be doing. But how could we really measure these impacts? It's particularly difficult. One possibility would be to think about lives saved, uh, as in the title of this talk. Uh, it turns out it's not a great measure, though, um, because it's hard to quite make sense of it. So if you save someone's life, it really matters whether, say, you save them from a heart attack and they live for one extra year, 
or whether they live for 30 extra years. And that's not covered by the idea of a life saved. Uh, instead, what we really care about is how much we extend someone's life by, because we can never really stop them dying altogether. So you might think that then we should instead use uh, life years saved, and that's a much better technique. However, it still doesn't take into account the quality of that life. Uh, for example, a, an extreme case is that uh, uh, if you've got someone who is blind and you can cure them of blindness, you're not adding any extra time to their life, but you're improving the quality of the existing years. Uh, so what we need to do is to weight the years of life uh, by the quality of those years. And so this is what uh, people do in public health and global health, uh, and they have this idea of a quality-adjusted life year. Uh, and that's what we're going to use here. And that can, is a tool that can help us really compare uh, different things within global health and see how much good they can do. Now, what I'm going to consider here is what you could do if you spent $1,000 uh, trying to help uh, fight HIV AIDS. So, uh, Kaposi's sarcoma uh, is a disfiguring skin condition that strikes uh, people in some cases when they have AIDS uh, because it's opportunistic and when their immune system is down, it can get them. Uh, now, it's expensive to treat, uh, but it's, it's roughly okay. Uh, $1,000 can give a week of life, which is not a terrible deal. I think it's actually an all right deal, but you can do much better. Antiretrovirals directly fight AIDS, uh, and uh, if you spend $1,000 on antiretrovirals, instead you can save an entire year of life. So that's actually 50 times more effective. Uh, so if you spent the money instead on uh, the Kaposi sarcoma, uh, then 98% of the potential benefits you could produce uh, would have been squandered in that case. But we could do even better, uh, in this case, uh, if we think about condom distribution to completely prevent the transmission uh, of AIDS from one person to another, $1,000 spent on that would save uh, instead 10 years, uh, which is 500 times more effective than we were at the start with Kaposi sarcoma. We could ask, can we do even better? And if we look beyond uh, AIDS, uh, then there are some opportunities uh, that can do even better than that. So uh, one that's particularly potent is uh, mosquito nets to help prevent malaria. Uh, if we spend $1,000 on mosquito nets, uh, the number of years of healthy life uh, that we expect to save all up uh, is 30 years. Uh, so that is actually more than 1,000 times more effective than if we'd spent the money on treating Kaposi sarcoma. Uh, so this is an incredible variety. Now let's just to get the sense of scale there, uh, we can zoom right back into the start uh, and then zoom all the way back out. And we can't even see those early ones anymore. This is an incredible scale. It really matters where you give. Uh, and so that's, I think, uh, the first of two really important points here. Uh, it, where you give really matters. Uh, I originally thought when I came into this that maybe some charities or different ways of helping people uh, could be 20% more effective or maybe even twice as effective as each other. Uh, but when it turns out that they could be up to 1,000 times as effective, then the question about the, the best thing you could do uh, compared to the second best may involve losing almost all of that value uh, and producing a much smaller benefit than you could otherwise have done. Uh, the second thing that's really important is that we can do so much. Uh, so uh, what's really surprising about those statistics I showed earlier isn't that, uh, that the less effective ones are really ineffective. Uh, treating Kaposi's sarcoma is done in the UK and in the US and it's actually really quite effective. Uh, it turns out, as I said, it's expensive, but it turns out that it costs about $6 per hour of life saved. Uh, I wouldn't give up an hour of life in order to get $6. I think that, you know, it's a good deal to be spending $6 to get an hour of life, uh, better than many things that we spend our money on. And yet we saw that some things are a thousand times more effective than that, so a thousand times more effective than what we spend our money on. Uh, so this is a really interesting thing because it shows that by donating to the right places, we can get our money uh, in our wallets at the moment or through our lives to have a thousand times as much value. The only catch is that we can't spend it on ourselves. Uh, we have to spend it to help people who are much less fortunate than ourselves elsewhere. Uh, I don't think that's all that much of a catch though, uh, as uh, if I think about uh, I could have a benefit for myself or have the same size benefit for a thousand other people, uh, I think it's a bit of a no-brainer and I would just be very happy giving the thousand people the benefit. So. Uh, you might be wondering uh, how it is, you know, can this be right? How could uh, small amounts of money to us have such large effects on other people's lives? Well, this can help to explain it. So this is what I think is the most important chart in economics. Uh, this is the world income distribution. And what we've got here is everyone in the world is lined up uh, from the poorest on the left through to the richest on the right. And uh, uh, the height of the, uh, the line at any point is the income in that year for that person. 
Uh, and you can see it's all very bunched up towards, uh, towards the right, towards the richest. Uh, if it was a perfectly equal world, this would be a flat, uh, a flat line. Now, uh, it, you might think that uh, it's all very well there. This doesn't, it's actually not as bad as this looks because money goes further in poorer countries. We've already adjusted for that. This is uh, at US Main Street prices. Now, there are many things that you could learn from this chart, but I just want to focus on one of them for today's talk. And that is uh, related to this question about how could our money be helping so much? Well, the thing is, how rich do you have to be to be in this, uh, in this spike here? Uh, and if you look at the numbers, uh, this is about $20,000 uh, per annum uh, per person. Uh, so it turns out that if you had a minimum wage job in the UK or in the US, you would actually be rich enough to be in the richest 10% of uh, the world's population at minimum wage, uh, and half of the UK and US population is rich enough to be in the, the richest 5% of, the, uh, of this world's population. Uh, and I'm sure many of you will end up in that area. In fact, many of you will end up in the richest uh, you know, one or 2% of the world's population. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of where I am, even after donating quite a lot of my money. Uh, so, What's, uh, it's no longer spectacular, right? If, if you're in one of the, you know, the richest part of the world, you've got a spectacular amount of money compared to these other people. Uh, and that's why it is that your money, what seems like a small amount to you, can really help to transform their lives. So, uh, I had this choice uh, between uh, these two different options. Uh, I could, uh, one thing I could do is give away about two thirds of the income I'll earn over my life uh, and uh, you know, make some kind of uh, financial sacrifice there, uh, but I would still end up with a great life. Uh, so I thought about the things in my life and I realized that I would still have access to, you know, centuries worth of fantastic music, uh, art, literature, uh, to my loving wife, uh, really warm friends, and have some money left for other things as well. Uh, and while doing that, I could save uh, about 30,000 years of life, 300 centuries of quality adjusted life, uh, which is equivalent to saving hundreds of people's lives. Or I could have uh, that great life I talked about before, plus some extra luxuries in it. And so I thought about this, and it didn't seem like actually all that much of a real choice. Uh, I decided to take uh, the first one of those and uh, live on a reduced income and be able to literally save hundreds of people's lives or produce a benefit equivalent to that. Uh, you, I mentioned earlier these quality adjusted life years. You could think of saving life as being around about 40 of these quality adjusted life years if you imagine saving someone halfway through their life and having 40 more years to live. Uh, I also uh, had a lot of people who, uh, who liked this idea and wanted to join me. So I set up an organization uh, called Giving What We Can uh, in order to promote these, uh, these two ideas. Uh, one was uh, to get people to give more and the other is to get them to give more effectively and really think about where they give and advise them. Uh, because if you give 10 times as much and you give 10 times as effectively, uh, you can have 100 times the impact uh, with your donations in your life. It's a, it's a realistic target. Uh, so I've been really, uh, uh, really honored uh, by the people who've joined me in this. About 400 people have joined me, uh, made a pledge uh, to give at least 10% of their income uh, for the rest of their lives uh, uh, to wherever it is that they think can most effectively fight uh, poverty and they give directly to those locations uh, but they're advised by us. Uh, we recommend charities such as the Against Malaria Foundation uh, which is a group that are very good at distributing those malaria nets that I mentioned earlier. So uh, together uh, we're, our pledges come to uh, about a quarter of a billion dollars now uh, and this is, this is enough to save millions of years of uh, life. Now some people ask me uh, in response you know, uh, to all of this uh, has it been difficult? It was about uh, four years ago uh, that I made this pledge uh, to give uh, all of my income above uh, 18,000 pounds per annum. Uh, and my answer is uh, no. Uh, I was a grad student when I decided to do this. Uh, I had less than that amount of money. I have more now uh, than I ever had before. Uh, and so I'm actually living pretty well and uh, have all of these great things, you know, my loving wife, my warm friends. Uh, and uh, life's as good as it's ever been. Uh, it, uh, the main difference actually is that I find that there are some issues where I previously thought I was running away from them and now I feel like I'm tackling them head on and making you know, the most of my life and really trying to help people directly and effectively. Uh, so if anything, it's actually not a sacrifice at all. It's, it's uh, kind of improved my life. Uh, and if you can help a lot of people for no real sacrifice, you know, sounds like a great idea. Uh, so I'm really excited by all of this. 
And uh, it seems to me that uh, uh, all of us uh, have the opportunity to save people's lives. In fact, if we really want to, to save hundreds of people's lives, uh, I think that some of you listening to this will make that decision and will go out and do that. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited by that. Uh, we've seen that the world is, a, is sometimes a very difficult and unfair place uh, with a great deal of suffering. Uh, but we each have the power to make a significant difference to that, uh, particularly uh, by using our money as our relative wealth. Uh, we've got this opportunity to transform people's lives. Let's do so. Thanks.